Hello, everyone. Welcome to our another episode of Surviving and Thriving Through the Pandemic, especially brought to you by Afin Bank. My name is Peter Lam, and I'm glad to be able to share some of my thoughts and ideas with you. In this episode, we're going to talk about um, marketing, marketing for business recovery specifically. Yeah. And uh, just give me a minute while I get to the slides and share my screen. Okay. So, um, as you can see, um, we have been doing this now for, this is the fourth episode. And uh, like I said, no, we want to be very thankful to for Afin Bank. They are really doing a lot of things for you guys in the SME sector. So great partners for businesses, um, very helpful. And that's one of the reasons why they are side by side with you and sponsoring this series to give you some ideas of how to survive and thrive through the pandemic series. Okay, so moving along, um, as I said, this is our fourth session. So if you miss any of the past three sessions, you can uh, look for the email or contact your Affin Bank representative and get it from them and or rewatch it. But today we're going to talk about um, marketing for business recovery. And basically the model that we use is, first of all, there are three pillars of business success. The first one is mindset. That was session one. And we're giving you now today methodology of how to build your business, how to recover, and how to do good marketing. Okay. So in the last session, we talked about cash flow mastery, which is also essential. And we asked you to put your business through a financial stress test to see how strong and healthy your cash flow is. So what happens if your business drops, your sales drops, or your cash flow drops? How long can you survive? Yeah. And the good news for SMEs is in this day and age, you can actually leverage, you know, because it's become a more level playing field with the advancement of technology and with the right mindset. And we can impart the skills and knowledge that you need to level the playing field and take on even the big guys. Yeah, to stay ahead and move ahead. So today is about marketing and business recovery. So many businesses, so unless you're in the rubber glove industry or PP or one of those, you know, high tech businesses like Google or Facebook or Microsoft or Apple um, or Amazon, you're going to have faced a lot of sales challenges. No? So how do we get out of that? So basically, instead of just focusing on sales, focus on marketing. And, you know, there are five common reasons why businesses fail. On, in addition to cash flow and poor planning, um, the big one is actually poor and inconsistent marketing. So one of the five common reasons why businesses fail is not having good marketing or having inconsistent marketing. So I hope that's not one of you, but if it is, we're going to have a, help you out with some solutions and some ideas. Yeah? So what's the purpose of business? This is a very fundamental question. No, What is the purpose of business? So a lot of people will say make money yeah, or make more money or become profitable, become successful and so on and so forth. But the real purpose of business is really, as Jack Ma said, you know, looking for the opportunity, the gap in the marketplace. What are people's challenges and problems? So business is actually about getting and keeping customers. So if you can fulfill a customer need, a customer challenge, a customer problem, and you can get and keep customers, then you have a business. And the purpose of business is only getting and keeping customers. Because if you've got no customers, you've got no business. Simple as that. So getting and keeping customers, and that's what marketing is about. And a lot of people only focus on getting customers. They forget about keeping them. So the real money, and as I described in my book, Profit Max Your Business, is about keeping customers. So if you've got good customers, you want to keep them, keep them loyal, keep them coming back, keep them buying more, satisfy all the other ones and needs. So in marketing, it's important to also know where are we starting from? What is our goal? So what are your goals, you know? Is your goal just to stay afloat for the next six months or next 12 months? Or is your goal to recover the 20% or 30% of lost sales? Or is your goal to take your business to another level after six months? Yeah. So you need to set your goals. That's very important. That's a starting point. Because goals require strategies and planning. Goals inspire effort and action. 
They provide you direction and focus and also create possibilities. So when you start to have good goals, then possibilities show up, open up, you know. And goals always lead to growth and results. So I like to liken goals as having a target and then putting up a ladder to achieve that target. The challenge is if you choose the wrong goal, it's like putting your ladder on the wrong wall. No? You climb up the wall and then you realize that the problem you need to fix is the roof on the other side or on the other wall, not this wall that you have climbed up. So that's very important, choosing the right goals. And I don't have time to talk about it, but you got to make sure that your goals are smart. S-M-A-R-T, I guess you all know that, right? That we specific, that we're measurable, achievable, realistic, and with a time frame or time focus, okay? All right, so generating new revenue, right? So today we're going to talk about generating new revenue because your current revenue model probably is having an impact or rather affected by the COVID crisis. And you're no longer able to get the revenue that you got maybe six months ago at the beginning of the year or last year. Okay. So like I said, unless you're in the rubber glove industry, most businesses are impacted. Most businesses have been affected. And that's why many companies are scaling down. So do you have a revenue and profit growth formula for your business? Okay. So I'm going to take you through what is this formula? The formula means it's actually six, six areas. Huh? You can only improve your profits in these six areas. Either number one, you get your customers to make larger average purchases. And you know, we can learn from the retail boys how they do this. <clears throat> so for example, if you go into a Padini or a, a, what's the Japanese one, Uniqlo or, or one of these, uh, or even Marks and Spencer, you'll find very often they have uh, two for the price of one or three for a special, you know, three pairs of socks for $12.99, you know, instead of buying one pair at $8.99, that kind of thing. So they get you to buy more. So that's one way to increase your revenue and also increase your profits, getting your customers to buy more. The famous one, of course, is McDonald's. No? So you go into McDonald's, you buy your, you order your burger, then they ask you, sir or ma'am, would you like fries with that? Or would you like an ice cream sundae with that? Or would you like you know, apple pie with that? So that's how you want to increase your average customer purchase. The second way to get more revenue and more business is to get your customers to buy more frequently. So this is where loyalty cards come in, frequent purchase programs and so on and so forth. If you're in the B2B B2 sector, for example, how do you get your customers to order more often, come back to you more often? In other words, how do you get them to be loyal customers that stay with you and stick with you? Yeah. Um, and then the third one is extending the customer's average buying lifetime. So like I said, customer loyalty, getting your customers to stick with you. And then only number four is getting more customers. Why is it number four and not number one? Because most, custom, most of my clients come to me and say, Peter, I need to get more customers. Can you help me to get more customers? And I say, yeah, we can, but let's see whether that should be your first priority. And why do I say that? Because very often, if you're not a new startup or new business, you should already have existing customers. So the first place to go is to go to your existing customers, provided they are your A customers or B customers, your top customers, your best customers, go back to them first and get them to buy more from you, get them to buy more often from you, or introduce new products to them, products that you have that they don't know, that they didn't buy from you in the past. So getting more customers, is good but it always requires an investment number one and number two getting new customers is normally not an immediate thing okay even though you have e-commerce or whatever it's not going to be immediate you probably need at least one week and if you're in the b2b sector your your lead time your sales cycle might take four weeks or eight weeks yeah depending on what product what industry you're in so getting more customers takes time and takes investment in some form of advertising or promotion or whatever. Even if you have a so-called free get more customers program, like a referral program, normally that will still take time and that will still take some investment, no? Um, so those are low cost strategies that we can work on as well. Number five is generate revenue through new products or services. Now, a lot of people forget this, no? And they only stick to what they have. In this day and age, you really need to uh, ramp up your new product development pipeline, no? either in R&D or in sourcing or what have you. When I was in Unilever 20 years ago, this was one of our pillars for growth. Yeah? So the chairman always said, 
at least 10 to 20% of our revenue growth must come from new products. So every year we are launching new products, you know, whether it's packet tea, um, pot bag tea, or new uh, peanut butter, or new shampoo, or different variants, new skincare products, whatever it is. So we must always be introducing new products. Same thing if we are in services. So for example, uh, my service now, instead of just coaching, I'm also doing training. And since we can't do a lot of face-to-face -face live training, we have to do some offline, uh, sorry, online training as well. So virtual classes and so on. And then the last one is increase your margins. Now, for some companies, this is very easy straight away. But for others, you have to work on it by, first of all, improving your distinctiveness, improving your differentiation, improving your positioning and your, your, your USP and so on. Okay, or your value proposition, okay? So there is an equation, no? So to get more customers, you need to get more leads or more prospects. And to get more leads or more prospects, you also then need to improve your conversion. So the first place is, where are you right now in terms of lead generation, in terms of conversion? Once you know your numbers, then you can work on increasing them. Where are your leads coming from, for example, no? The next part is to get your customers, like I said, to either buy more from you or to visit you more often or to buy more often. That will translate to higher revenue. And then your revenue multiplied by your margins will get you more profits. Now, we have a worksheet for you to work this out. And if you'd like a free copy of the worksheet, just send, in, send us an email to success at peterlamcoach.com and one of our team will email it to you. Okay? So this will help you. At least you know where is your base, where is your current point, then you can work upwards, all right? Okay, another great thing you want to do in this day and age is to look at ways to collaborate, okay? This is becoming a buzzword, collaboration, okay? So for example, um, or some people call it partnership or strategic partnership or strategic alliances, but collaboration is a very, sounds like a very friendly term, right? Like, like, yeah? So learn how to collaborate and collaborate with the right people. The most important thing about collaboration is people with the same mindset, with the right mindset. No? So for example, this group of um, F and B people got together to start what they call a GF Ghost Kitchen. GF stands for good fun. Okay, good fun, good ghost kitchen. So 10, 20 of them came together. So one common venue, but you can serve, you can choose so many different types of food. Now, you may say that's like going to a food court. Yeah, in a way, it's like going to a food court. But the fact is they come together, share their resources, share their marketing, collaborate, and share ideas how to grow together. No? And it's a very interesting collaboration. So I think they have one somewhere in, uh, I'm not sure where. Uh, this started in Singapore, but they've now come to Malaysia. And I think they have somewhere, probably around the KLCC area, something like that. So another example is, for example, we are doing this now with Afin Bank. So we are collaborating. So I coach SME owners and Afin Bank wants to grow their SME business. So we have different client base and we can collaborate. Yeah. So think of ways how you can collaborate. Now, in this day and age, the COVID-19 crisis is just going to accelerate our move towards digital economy. So you can read up on all kinds of statistics. No, Digital economy is just moving ahead very fast, very quickly. And what you want to do is how learn how to create your digital assets. So I want to introduce you to this thing called what I call the media trifecta. And a lot of people don't realize this. They just, jive, they just dive straight away into Facebook or into Instagram and they start advertising and, and all that. Not that it's wrong, not that it's bad, but you know, you should do it in the proper way and understand this perspective. So what is the media trifecta? They say trifecta tells you the three parts. Huh? So there's something called paid advertising or paid media. And there's something called earned media and there's something called owned media. So paid media is the easiest to understand. So we start with that. Huh? So paid media is things like your traditional advertising. You advertise in newspaper or you advertise in TV or radio or you advertise in outdoor banners and outdoor billboards and all that. That is paid media. All right. You advertise online, Facebook, or YouTube, or you do banner advertising with Google, any of that, that is paid. Anything that you pay money, that's paid media. And there are advantages and disadvantages of paid media, right? 
You have to pay for it, that's one. Okay. Um, then you have what you call your own media. So your own media are things that you own. Now this takes some effort to build and maybe takes some time. But once you build it, it's yours, you own it. No? So for example, your website or your e-commerce site, your mobile apps, if you have mobile apps, your email, your database, your SMS, your messaging, your direct mail, and if you're in retail and you've got signage and, and the storefront, those are all your own media, all right? You own it. So if something happens to Facebook or the government says, you're gonna close down social media or you can only post whatever two times a day or some ridiculous, I don't know, but anything can happen, right? Or a new guy like TikTok comes and takes over and then the other, the other social media all drop, you know? your, your following is all gone. So you don't have much control, all right? And the third one is earned media. So earned, as you say, you have, as, as, it, as it implies, you have to earn it. And that's you have to work for it. In other words, you have to add value, all right? So how do we do this, no? So a lot of people nowadays leave reviews on TripAdvisor, for example, or they give testimonials, and they're rewarded for the giving testimonials. No? Then there's free publicity. And um, also you can, you can get earned media through what you call value added or useful tips and advice. For example, you write a 1,000 word article on how to, um, how to eat good nutritious food that will improve your immunity, for example. Or how to cook chicken in seven different easy ways in 30 minutes. So those kind of things, if people find it very useful, very helpful, very interesting, they will share. So that is called earned media, you earn it. No? So one post, instead of just reaching your organic reach, maybe it's only 10, 5%. Nowadays with Facebook, the organic reach is getting smaller and smaller because they want you to advertise. But if you have a viral post, that could go to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 shares, you know, and likes and so on. So that's how you get earned media. And the point of all this is, at the end of the day, you want to look at the overlap, the overlap of the three circles, the center. The overlap shows that you can actually get the most out of all three of these different media, yeah? So when you get, when you use paid media, earned media and own media, you can look at things like influencer marketing, content marketing, social media, search, and even events, all right? So um, just to give you an overview, all right? Now with that complexity in the background, I want to introduce you to something more strategic when you look at digital marketing or digital business development. So I call this digital architecture and I, it's in chapter eight of my book, Profit Makes Your Business. I talk about this, how to build a solid, strong business. So at the core of all your digital marketing efforts should be your website. Now, if you have a blog, if you're in the information industry or service industry, like if you're an accounting firm or a legal firm providing advice, then you have a blog. But a blog is also a website. No? And that should be the core of your digital marketing drive, all right? Build your website because like I said, your website is your owned media, you own it, all right? That's a piece of, that's a piece of real estate in the internet, all right? Now, the next thing is to look at your analytics. So in this day and age, if you're a marketeer, you've got to know term, terms like CAC and LTV and so on and so forth. So CAC is short for customer acquisition cost. And if you advertise on social media like Facebook or even Google, they have a dashboard for you. So they, they tell you what is your customer acquisition cost. You spend hundred bucks, you get 10 customers, your customer acquisition cost hundred divided by 10, which is 10 bucks, yeah? So uh, you gotta look at your analytics, but you gotta look at analytics because beyond just CAC and LTV. You gotta look at your analytics in terms of what, what media or what is driving traffic to your website. What are the keywords that people are looking at and so on. So there are all kinds of tools to do that. And then your social media should be integrated to your website. So whatever you do on your social media should bring in people back to your website. So you should use your social media to drive traffic to your website. And not only that, you should want to have buttons in your website to make it easy for people to share content with other people on social media. So social media, if you have Facebook, if you have Twitter, if you have YouTube, if you have um, uh, IG, 
IGTV, whatever it is, whatever it is, you want to drive it all back to your website. And your website needs to have things like landing pages and so on and so forth. There are squeeze pages and so on. And then that's how you get Google ranking. Now, Google rank, if you're well, if you're well ranked on Google, that is very strategic because people don't search beyond page one. 93% or 97% of people never go beyond page one when they're searching for something. So let's say you're keying in business coach Malaysia and page one will come out and then you find Peter Lam is number one on page one. And then maybe you might look beyond Peter Lam, you might look at two or three more. But you know, very few people will go to page two or even page three, you know. So you want to make sure that you're ranked. And when you are ranked well, it shows that you are an authority in your business. That's why Google is putting you on number one or number two or number three, you know. But you want to be in the top three if you can. Top one is the best, of course. Because that shows that you are industry leader, you're an authority in your, in your subject area, in your product, in your service. And that gives you a lot of credibility, all right? And then the, the, the fifth layer you should put on it is email marketing. Now, a lot of people say nobody checks email these days. Well, that's wrong. That's totally wrong. That's totally untrue. If you are in business, email is still has a role. Even though people are using a lot of WhatsApp or what have you, or working with uh, Microsoft Teams or, or Trello or whatever the tool is, email is still essential. Your challenge is to build up your email database because it's all about numbers. And number two, how good is your headline or subject line in your email so that your email gets open, all right? So the email capture should also be integrated into your website. And that's why I talk about the essential importance of having landing pages, all right? So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do and how you can take your um, digital marketing efforts forward. Now, I know there's a lot, but you just want to focus on one or two. So you, you should have a 90-day action plan of how to, for example, improve your website or revamp your website or build landing pages, or do keyword research and get yourselves ranked, for example. And simultaneously in that 90 days, you can also work on um, landing pages and creating clickbait and lead magnets, giving value to people so that they share their email with you. That's so common nowadays, right? But you've got to offer people value, whatever it is. No? So if you're a real estate agent, you want to offer value, like for example, how to get top value when you're selling your property, or how to get good tenants in Moncara. You know? Seven ways to get good tenants in Moncara, to attract good tenants in Moncara. So these are the things you have to do um, to, to win the, the battle on the digital marketing front. So I hope I've given you some ideas and this just to quickly show, you know, if you, for example, Google Profit Max Your Business, you find the whole page is dominated by, by Profit Max Your Business. No? So uh, videos to images, to articles, to podcasts, everything. So the whole of page, the whole page is basically you find everything about Profit Max Your Business, okay? So I hope I've given you some ideas especially when we were talking about um, this one, you know, the profit growth equation. So I hope you guys got some ideas here of what you can do, the six areas you can do to increase your profits and to get more results and more revenue, new revenue, okay? So, um, yeah, before I leave, just want to end with this, no? So there are four essential plans to power, to power through the crisis. Um, you will have gone through the cash flow recovery plan. Um, we just talked a bit about recovery plan and, and today we are focusing more on how to generate new revenue and new growth. You also need to have a new normal business plan because going forward, things are not going to go back to the way they were last year or the beginning of the year. This is the new normal. This is the, this is the new trend. Everyone is going digital. Everyone is going to be wearing face masks. Everyone is going to be observing social distance. And this is going to happen for at least the next one, two years. Even if the vaccine comes out at the beginning of next year, and that's being very, very optimistic, people will still not change it because the vaccine is not going to be um, available to everyone or to all the countries until, you know, probably another one or two years. And that's assuming we get a, a vaccine that is proven, tested, that works. So this is a new normal. 
So what you want to do is develop a 90-day dynamic business plan. Okay. I just want to leave you with this thought by Edward Deming. Edward Deming is the founder of Quality. He is the guy who helped the Japanese to build what you call the quality control circles. Yeah. And this is what he says. It's not enough to do your best. You must know what to do and then do your best. So you got to scale up and, and skill up, you know, upskill yourself. And well, I want to introduce you to my book that will really help you. And uh, this book uh, will give you a lot of ideas how to build a strong, solid business, which is really what we want to do. We want to help you so that when you get through, when you come to hit a crisis like this or the next crisis, whatever it is, um, you want to be able to stay strong, stay solid and weather through the storm. Okay. So um, this is exclusively brought to you by Afin Bank. Just want to thank them again and uh, hope you guys have been getting value from our series and I'll see you again next time. All the best.